All right, so it's the next day. Brian was able to take his air hammer and just knock that thing off. I was trying to use the bearing puller on it and that was not working out just because of where it is. But his air hammer, it zinged it right off. So we ain't got another bearing. So let's try to put this thing in again. All right, guys, well, we have an assembled third member, as they call it. This stuff wasn't too bad. You just have to kind of go back and forth, loosening these and, and spinning these to get the adjustment. I was trying to, I hadn't done a ton of nine inches. I've always done the 8.8 .8 stuff. So I was trying to tighten it down. Uh, I was trying to spin this with these tight and it really doesn't spin very good. I could get it to move some, but it's not a good thing. That's what Brian was like. You need to loosen those, get it pretty close and then tighten them down. And that worked like a champ. So he's done a bunch of nine inch stuff and you know, I've, I've done Randy's and well, me, Brian and Randy have done Randy's. I hadn't really done one by myself a ton. So I guess it's something with those things I'm going to be, be learning is how to do nine inch stuff. Well, hopefully I won't, but everything seems to be good. Bearings are good, snug. These things are pretty cool. All they do is hold the spanner that is in the right location. And then, um, you know, backlash, you can hear it moving at very, very little movement. We're gonna throw the dial indicator on it and see what kind of backlash, eight to 12, 10 to 14, somewhere in that range. Um, this is a pro gear, which is softer than a, a regular gear. So it should be able to absorb the shock, they say. So we'll paint it up too and see what we got. All right, guys, so the way we do this, this is much easier than in the car. Just set the dial indicator on the table, and then you get it on the flat part of the tooth there. And then, and then Keith is going to hold that and I'm gonna just flop it back and forth so you should be able to see how much it's actually moving. So 10, 12 thousandths. 12 thousandths. We're right in the money there, guys. Perfect. Thank you, Keith. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, well, here we go. This is the contact patch. Now, this is the drive side of the gear. The way you know the drive side and the coast side, the drive side is flat and the coast side is the angle. But you can see, that's honestly probably the best gear pattern I have ever gotten. But now there is a one caveat to this. This is like the first new gear that I've ever checked. <laughs> Most of the time I check old gears that are used, which you can't really change them. I guess you can a little bit, but the coast side looks good. Dry side looks good. So I think we are in good shape here. So we're gonna take this thing, uh, rear end it, it's nice and smooth. It runs good, all this is tight. So now we're gonna to toss it in the car. And look, I've already started using the back of the car for a shelf. I got my mid plate, I got my front plate, um, some uh, proportioning valve stuff, seat belts, hatchback stuff. Buddy Rodney sent those for me. Um, I bought these seat belts last year. I mean, no when the Okay, so they're good for two years. So I'm only a month out. I bought them last, I think November or October. All that stuff. Bolts and bearings and trash. Okay, all right. So we're we're making progress here, guys. Let's stick this thing in real fast and see if we can uh, get the axles back in it and start working on clearancing the the brakes. All right, guys, so the rear end, the center section is in. I've got the other axle in on the other side. And so now we're gonna put this axle in and the other the other brake caliper. Now, when Zach bought this stuff, it was in a million different pieces. So, you know, it's one of those things, you know, everything may or may not be uh, together and, and right. So the rear end, the center section is 100% correct. 
The axle slid in fine on the other side, bolted in. The caliper is notched. The, the bracket, the bracket is notched to hold the bearing in, right? That's what holds the axle in. And so then, of course, your caliper mounts to this as well. And so on the other side, it's not quite fitting. You want the rotor to be in the center of this, right? And so on the other side, it's not. But the problem is, is I can't space it. The way I need to space it is it would have to be spaced between the bracket here and the housing. And that's not gonna work because that's the hold down for the bearing. So what I'm gonna have to do is actually machine. And when by I say machine, I mean grind with a grinder. I'm gonna have to grind a little bit off of this this mounting pad here. So once I grind start grinding on this pad, I think uh I think it was on this side. I don't have to I have to look at it real close before I start grinding. I'm gonna grind it. Need to take about eighty to ninety thousandths off, and then that way my my rotor this thing is having a terrible time focusing. And that way my rotor will be dead in the middle here of these two. Okay, guys. So we're getting closer. I'm just Get this one bolted in real fast and then we'll worry about the grind. All right, guys. Well, here is my uh, professional machining. We did that with a, a flap disc on a side grinder. It's pretty close. Um, mostly even. Knocked off about 90-ish thousandths. Let's see if it fits. All right, guys. Well, here we go. We got one side down. You see the spacing is it's pretty close to in the middle. So... We did have to do some good grinding on the bracket. Let's see where I ground the bracket, got it so that it fits. And I think we're good to go on this side. I don't really understand, you know, what it is. I don't know if this, this brake caliper, clearly we got aerospace calipers, probably aerospace, most likely bracket, but that may not be aerospace. I don't know. I've never seen an aerospace one like that. So, all right, let's do the other side. So Brian just took that wheel off, that tire, and he's putting the 28s on it, but it looks like we are going to have some pretty good clearance. But look at the size difference between the 28 10.5 non-W, and then this is a 29.5 W, 10.5 W. Wow, that is huge, man. Man, this little tire, that 28 is going to look like a... It's going to look very small. It's going to look like a freak of nature. Ways. Yeah. Well, at least we fit the big tire. All right, guys. Well, we got this thing done. We had to really do a lot of clearance. And we did a lot of clearance. And, but now they are 28s on there. And they spin. And boy, they are, they are tucked up under there. The good thing about this look here is kind of like the three-wheeler. The back wheels are tucked in real far. And it should drive good. Now, I'll probably have to get a different spacing of wheels here at some point. All right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. See you later.